What's up everybody? Welcome back to Yu-Gi-Oh! BAM! So in the previous video we left off with Chapter 9 where basically we had to rescue Joey although I don't see the point in that because by the time you get to the chapter he's already like free technically so it's like hmm I don't know but anyway so we're about to move on to Chapter 10 on the hunt yet again cool alright so got the treasure chest there so let's start with the story in light of the recent events several questions need to be answered why was Joey kidnapped what is Merrick up to how will you be able to rescue Yugi you've never been much of a troublemaker so why would blah 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 be after you but there are more urgent matters at hand on your way back Yusei catches up with you and tells you that Akiza has disappeared you split up to look for Akiza it's funny I remember the first time I played through all this I was like oh god damn it Everybody's just fucking disappearing. Anyway. Alright, so first duel. I know who this is, but I'll wait till they reveal it. Alright, so heal 400 or deck times 2. Spells only. I can't believe I beat that. That was ridiculous. Uh, let's do heal 400 because it's probably the hardest. In my opinion. Alright, so. Ugh. Not the greatest hand but not the worst hand I've ever seen either so anyway alright hit BAM okay well well Boku I don't think I need yeah I don't think I need it it's not a big deal there we go yep <laughs> Alright, 105 coins. Nice. Not bad. Okay, what's the next part of the story? Now, who was that? DD. Okay, 14 again. Alright, so we got Hill 100, 2 card hand, or light only. I don't think I have any light cards, so I'm going to have to do that one later. Let's see. Hill 100 isn't that hard, so we'll do 2 card hand. It's a little bit harder, in my opinion. You say it was right. 8100. Ugh. Damn it. Oh, wait, he put a spell there, so I could still destroy him. Nice. Alright. Okay. Not bad. Dead. Damn, the asshole always freaking gets me. He he's so weak, but he has really good power ups, I suppose. Oh, Fissure, you suck. There you go. There you go. Oh, I'd say it's over now. Yeah, it's definitely over. I hit bam. Boom. Not bad. 105 coins for that, not bad. Not bad at all. Okay, so... Next part of the story. This guy sure is tenacious, but somehow you don't feel threatened. Well, DD. You have to go through me first. Alright, boost all 300, 1,000 light points. 1,000 light points, that's the big one. Let's try it, just for lols. Let's just see if I can do it. Oh, nice hand, nice hand. Alright, so put that there. Boom, son. Oh, this is not going to end well. Okay, so 1,400 and 600. If, he, if these guys get killed, I'm probably going to be screwed. Here, but we'll see. There we go. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> why I love these kinds of cards. Drain cards are so awesome. If you can get like the right amount of power with them, or if you can build up enough power with them, these guys are freaking awesome. Oh man, could this be it? This be it? Let's see. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. I believe in you. There you go. Oh, yeah, it's over. Boom. 
I did not lose any points. Nice. All right, 105 coins for that. Not bad. If I remember correctly, this this uh, node has nothing to do with the actual story. So let me check. Um, nope. So yeah, this one we get to here. Yeah, so this this guy's name is Crow. So as you can see. What's really annoying is you have to fight this guy a lot. It's really annoying, but it's not too bad, I suppose. Here, let's put that there. Why not? There we go. I only lost 100, so it's not a big deal. Boom. All right. So um, I think I'll play this guy, because if he loses, then I'll do deal some damage to him. So it won't be that bad. Didn't feel good. Wow. One hit owned him with this guy. It's not bad. <laughs> Alright. Cool. Alright, so what's next? It's Crow Hogan. You say his longtime friend. He's heard about you, but before he can trust you, you'll need to win a couple of duels against him. A couple. One, two, three, four. And then five. And then, like, there's three more occasions you have to duel him after this. So, really, a couple times, right. They trick me. Anyway. Oh, an ambush is right there. Completely forgot. Am I interrupting something? Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't think I need that, so let me see. Nope, I don't really need it. Only 100 damage dealt to me. I don't trust that, so I might use my Oboku right now. Oh, it was a Call of Darkness. Okay, so... Not a big deal. Alright, um... I'll play this guy, because he gets more points than him. And he boosts, too, so that's awesome. And done! Alright, 105. Not bad. Okay, so I thought of uh, a few stories I could tell you guys. They're kind of strange, but hopefully you might find them interesting. Alright, so let me let me pick this and I will get into it. Uh, hurt 300 or 2,000 light points. Um, I'm not sure, honestly. Let's see. Hurt 300... If you're if you're getting dealt a lot of damage, then yeah, that could be potentially hard. But uh, the two thousand light points—that's like your set amount. Yeah, well, see, I did a thousand light points one, so I'll just, let's do this one for lols, I guess. All right, nine hundred. Should I place that there, or I don't think it matters where you place it. All right, so story time. Okay, so there was a there was an occasion a long time ago. Oh shit! That, yeah, I figured. Hold on a second, guys. I'm trying to see how much I have left if I have enough to do it again. Okay, so 33. That's 24, and that's 14. So it's 38. So I'm not gonna have enough. Damn it. I would have had enough if I didn't lose that. Damn. Well, here, I'll just play it again and then see what happens. Well, see, part of the problem was I didn't get very good cards. So, yeah, let me do this one. Oh, now you give me a good hand, you freaking asshole? Oh, whatever. So anyway, back to telling the story. So, it was um, it was St. Patrick's Day, I believe. It was either 2003 or 2004. I don't quite remember, but um, anyway. So, I know um, I I found like this coupon book, like outside or something, 
and I wanted to uh I got the random idea to burn it. So um it's it's kind of like it's kind of interesting how I just randomly got the idea to burn it. Let's see, read the next part of the story. One more, and you should be able to count on Crow's help to find the keys. Uh, hmm. Okay, so wow, this whole freaking chapter is Crow. I don't know. I I need to kill four minutes before I can do the next duel anyway. So uh, I'll just finish telling the story. So yeah, it was. I got the random idea to uh, burn the coupon book. So um. And I know there was there's a kid that went to my school that lived a few houses down from me, and they were outside playing soccer, and so I went up to him. See, this kid he didn't really like me, so basically I thought, oh maybe I could like be cool around him or something. Like maybe he'd think I was cool. So um, anyway, so I went up to him and I said, hey, do you like fire? He's like, fire, yeah. And I was like, you want to see me burn, burn a coupon book? And uh, I don't remember what his, his response was. Because I guess, uh, um, what was what did he say? He's like, uh, sure, I guess, or something. I don't really remember what he said because it was a while back. But um, anyway, so uh, I burned this coupon book. I was burning it in like this little area in the... Uh, in the place that I live, because we lived in a, a town home at the time, and so there was this little like a uh, grassy area where it's kind of surrounded by a few trees, so it's kind of uh, secluded, I guess, in a way. So then um, I burned this coupon book, right? But I didn't like I wasn't satisfied, so then I found a box. And then I, I like threw like some newspapers and stuff in it, and I started burning that stuff. And you see, you know how it is with fire; it starts spreading. So it started spreading, and I started kind of panicking a little bit because I was, I was really like an inch away from some person's house because I was behind a tree. Like I was behind a tree, and then there's like a little space there between the house and the tree. So I was worried if it spread anymore. I, I could have burned this lady's house down, and that wouldn't have been good. So basically, what happened was, like I, I kind of panicked with putting, with trying to put the fire out. I, I kind of panicked with this fire. So I was thinking, huh, maybe I'll, I'll try to walk away and pretend like I don't know what's happening. So I went to like the edge of the area because there's like a fence over there, and then I was looking. I was just like standing by the fence, wondering what what's trying to act like I, not, I didn't know what was happening. So then um, this lady she comes down the down the uh, the walk, and so she uh, and so she's asking, "Oh, what's with that smoke? What's that smoke or something?" And then uh, the kids, and then like the kid I was referring to that I was playing soccer with his group of friends. He comes over, he's like, oh, I know what's going on, or something like that. And then he basically told the lady that I burned the, that I was, that I started a fire, basically. So then, uh, she's like, oh, why would you do that? Like, put it out now. And so I was sitting there trying to put it out, right? And so, like, I was just really panicking, because, like, I was so scared. So I was sitting there trying to put out this fire. And then some, and then some kid, he comes behind there, and he's like, "Whoa, that's fire!" And it's like, "Wow, no shit, Sherlock. Great observational skills." So I was sitting there trying to put it out, and then um, I think it was the kid's dad that showed up, like uh, like the kid I was referring to that didn't like me. I think his dad came over, and is like, "It's like I don't know why why you would do this. Don't ever do this again." And so, basically, I got this guy and this lady on my ass. So, basically, I was, um, trying to, like, I was just sitting there crying. Like, I was crying so hard because I was so scared. And then the lady just sits there and and she, like, asks me, where do you live? And, like, I was just crying even more when she asked me that. 
and so and so I told her like I was just like I was crying and telling her this and she's like okay well I'm gonna I'm gonna be over later and talk and talk to your mom so then uh, so then I was just walking away crying and then the kid's dad he kept asking me oh you okay you okay it's like no you're sitting here fucking yelling at me do you really think I'm okay but it's kind of my fault because I made the stupid decision you know and you see one thing I've noticed is why do people like why do people always ask is like when you're a child they always ask where do you live because there was like another occasion where this has happened because I remember um, my friend I was walking down the street with his with his uh, little brother and um, the area where we lived we had like there was like all these kind of I think they were apple trees they were either apple or grape trees or not grapes, uh, cherries, and you know, uh, if you don't harvest them after a certain point, they get rotted out, and then they fall down, they fall out of the trees, so basically, he picked, so basically, his little brother, he picks one up, and then he throws it at this truck passing by, and then he starts, and like, he starts chuckling a little bit, and then the lady, she turns around in her truck, and she's like, gunning right for us, and I thought she was gonna run us over for a second, but you see, um, what happened was she like rolled down the window and then she just immediately asked like, oh, where do you live? Where do you live? And you see, I think this was the time when we moved. So I lived all the way across town. So it's not like she could have did much. And you see, I was, I was kind of like, I was just a, a witness. I didn't really take part in it. I was just at the wrong place at the wrong time, basically. So yeah, he threw the freaking thing at the truck, and yeah, that was just interesting. I always wonder why adults always ask you, where do you live? So, it's funny. But anyway, I guess going back to that, uh, to when I burned that box, um, basically, I remember it was like a few years later when, in school, um, we, we went to the library for class. And then, um, I remember that kid, he sat down at our table, and he was sitting there saying, like, he he brought up that story again, when I burned that box. And basically, he thought it was funny, and it's like, it's like, oh, I remember you burned a box, and I was cracking up laughing, or something like that. And you see, uh, what's funny is like, oh, you were the one that dimed me out, so it's like, I don't know why you think that's so funny. Because I could have sat there and said to him, oh, I don't, well, I didn't appreciate you diming me out over it, you know. But anyway, that was kind of a random occasion, I thought. That was back when I did some pretty stupid stuff, you know. But, um, anyway. So, that is the end of chapter 10. And that rhymes. All right, so 110 for that, not bad. So yeah, those kind of some random stories. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Anyway, you looked everywhere with Crow, but couldn't find Akiza, not even the slightest clue. Maybe you say had more luck. You head back to the training facility with your newfound friend, Crow. All right, that is chapter 10, people. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed this, because I'm still having fun playing this game. Anyway... If you guys happen to enjoy it, please give it a rating, subscribe to see more videos from me, and I will catch you guys in my next video. Alright, peace out guys.